Straw Hut Media. Hey Heartbreakers! So today I have another solo episode for you guys. I get a lot of questions and sometimes it's hard to get them all answered because there's so many. So I just want to answer the questions that are most asked and get a little bit more personal for the girly listeners that are watching. So today I want to talk to you about my fitness journey, actually. Um, That's a frequently asked topic and I love to just dive right into it. As a female trying to stay in good shape, it really can be intimidating going to the gym between the creepy guys, not knowing how to use the equipment, and just finding the time. I know that it's a struggle for women in everyday life just keeping up that body image you know, staying with the fitness trends. So I'd love to talk to you about how I even started working out, which I honestly started working out just recently. And that was this past January 2024. (laughs) I actually had to really commit to working out. I purposely did not go out for New Year's Eve because I promised myself that January 1st, I'm working out and I didn't want to go to the gym hungover. So I just started with actually going to the gym and using the treadmill and the stair stepper. And that's all I did. I did that for 30 minutes. I didn't want to traumatize myself and make myself hate the gym. I would try to find like workout friends to go with, but they would kind of always flake on me. One thing about me is if I promise myself to do something, I don't like to not do it. It's really important to me. Um, So I'll literally say, I promise myself that I'm going to the gym. And I do it. I try to go at least three times a week, which is a lot. I would say just twice a week. You know, I think that's what normal people can do um, with full schedules. Like if you're working a nine to five, everybody typically has two days off a week sometimes. So I just spend one hour at the gym. Yeah, I mean, the challenges that I face as a female getting into fitness I just don't want to do it. I hate working out. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And it's really hard for me to stay motivated. That's my main challenge. Like I hate it all the way up until I'm leaving. And how do I deal with creepy guys at the gym is another issue. I actually use a personal trainer now, which is the next question. But the creepy guys, it's hard. In LA, the gym is almost like a hangout spot. Like people will be there three, four hours and they wear their cute outfits. They have their hair and makeup done. Like everybody's chatting to each other. I don't like that. And I just go in there like stone cold, makeup not done, hair not done, don't wear a cute outfit, put your headphones in, and you just have to ignore them, unfortunately. There's going to be creepy guys no matter where you go, no matter what you do. Even if you're not working out, there's always going to be a creepy guy. Sorry, that's just the truth. Like You could just be walking down the street and there's going to be a creepy guy there. Um, Is getting a personal trainer worth the cost? Yes, I personally think that it is, but I'll just be honest, a personal trainer, at least in LA, is typically 150 to 200 for the hour. I've never really heard of, of a trainer charging less. I've also heard of trainers charging way more than that. Um, and that can be really costly for some people. I mean, that's $300 a week if you go twice. What I like about a personal trainer is that they can show you exactly what to do and then you can just, you know, write it down. You can remember it. You can even film it while they're showing you. And then when you go to the gym by yourself, you could do the same workouts and get the same results. I like a trainer because I don't do my workouts correct even when I'm by myself, even when he showed me a hundred times. I mess up every single time and I've hurt myself actually really badly one time. My back, it was even swollen and I just will never not use a trainer again. I mean, it was traumatizing for me. But yeah, uh, trainers can be creepy too. So keep that in mind. You're either going to have a creep at the gym by yourself or I'm just kidding. I don't want to convince people not to work out. If you're a female, I would actually say get a female trainer. That's going to be your easiest bet. And a lot of gyms actually um, have trainers that work at the gym. You don't have to hire them privately. Uh, My favorite workout 
is I think it's called a kickback. I always rename the workouts to things that don't make sense, but my favorite is the kickback. I see a lot of results. Recently, I've really seen results in my butt, in my legs. It has really grown. I'm really proud of it. And yeah, it's from the kickbacks and deadlifts and squats. They always, they build that muscle quick. What I really like about my personal trainer too, is he built me off of my muscle, off of my own body weight before we even started using weights at all. And I really saw results with that. I have a really great trainer really, really great trainer. He's really nice and really normal. I got lucky. Um, The days that you don't feel like going, what gets you to go? It's that promise I made to myself. I don't want to disappoint myself. So I'll go. I always feel better after I leave the gym. I'm not going to lie. I feel like honestly more energized. It's cortisone, right? That you release when you're working out, if I'm not mistaken. And that helps with your stress levels. It really helps me for that hour. Like I have to pay attention so much to what I'm doing to keep myself honestly safe from messing up. It's a great distraction. I really have become obsessed with it just for that alone is that hour, hour and a half of distraction where I almost kind of feel at peace even though I hate the gym so much. It doesn't really make sense, but it does work. And everybody for like, years was trying to convince me to work out, but we're here now. Um, So what really um, got me to start going to the gym is I had a crush on a guy that didn't like, (laughs) that I didn't go to the gym. He was really athletic. He was always like, you should try to go to the gym for your stress. I wanted to show off to him that I knew how to work out and that I really liked it. And then I dropped the guy. So yeah, I mean, that's, That's why I started going to the gym. That was my motivation. If that's your motivation, I say do it. What I like to do for me personally is I don't like to focus too much on my arms. I don't want them to get big and masculine. I want to keep my body very toned but feminine. One thing I forgot to add was I do one day a week Pilates and that really keeps your body lean. It's really hard. I know it's super in right now to do Pilates, but I recommend doing it one day a week. And the workouts that I do are mainly like my stomach and my legs and butt. For my legs, I do deadlifts and squats with a dumbbell. I don't remember the names, guys. I'm sorry. But another thing that I like to do with the dumbbell is like, uh, it's called a halo. And that helps with your arms. Actually, I do the kickbacks. I do the step ups, I think they're called where you have like a box and then you step up and you're holding a weight. Yeah, I mean, those things, they really, like, I'm sore a lot. I'm not going to lie. Like, if you do enough of them and you stay committed, you will be sore. And don't be scared of that because that just means it's working. I really like to tone my stomach. So I'll do um, planks. That's what it's called, right? You're like this and you're, yeah, planks. Planks on a ball, like one of those blow-up medicine balls. And you put your elbows on it actually like that and you move it slightly back and forth. That really gets your core to burn, but it works. I do that every single time. Um, What benefits have you noticed with your mental health, physical health, and emotional health? Everybody told me this. It really helps your mental health. I don't know what it is. I want to say that it's that cortisone that you're releasing or the fact that you can look in the mirror and really like your results and see the results and like be like, wow, I really like my body. It really helps me emotionally when I'm like amped up and I'm upset and I go to the gym. It's almost like when you go to those smash rooms and you like smash a bunch of stuff. Like it's the same type of feeling that I get. Another thing about when I'm working out is I started to actually lose muscle because I wasn't eating enough protein and I want people to be cautious of that because um, you can get like the opposite results. So always bring like a shake or something like that and it really helps uh, if you're not going to eat the protein, just quick throw it in a shake. They actually taste really good now. The Fairview or Fair Life, whatever it's called, the 42 grams, it tastes like a, just like chocolate milk. It has a little bit of an aftertaste, I'm not going to lie, but uh, it really helps. And they say you're supposed to have the same amount of grams as protein that you weigh. So I don't know how true that is, but I want to say that it's true because it's really helped me. Um, Oh, you guys, if you guys want a really good tip, and I can't believe I'm going to leak this right now, but if you want to date an athlete or meet an athlete, go to the private gyms where you have to have a, I'm not going to say which ones, 
But in LA, you have to have a trainer with you. Like you can't just go and work out by yourself. And it's only you with your trainer. And it's typically like an athlete that's also there. They don't let anybody else in. It's great to meet non-creepy guys. I feel like the public gyms can be really um, full of the creepy guys. You could also go during like the afternoon, at least in LA. People are always there in the morning, like really early before work or in the evening. And I noticed that the gyms are pretty dead in the afternoon. So if you want to avoid those creepy guys, but there's always that one guy at the gym that's there and like everyone's like, oh no, so-and-so's here. And yeah, so just stay away from that person. Don't fall for it. I hope that helped answer some of your fitness questions. And some key takeaways are that just go to the gym for 30 minutes, start off slow, just look at the equipment. You don't have to go hard and shock yourself. That's my like number one advice to you guys is to don't scare yourself. Just go ease into it. And yeah, I hope that really helps you guys. So here are some questions that, um, sadly, we couldn't answer in our normal episodes. The first one is, I recently got into a fist fight with a friend of a friend for being transphobic, and now my friends won't talk to me. Interesting. Recently got into a full-on fist fight with a friend of a friend who we will call Mark and broke his nose. I was at a party at a friend's house, and we were all drinking. I have a lot of trans and queer friends, and Mark was saying very transphobic comments, including that Mark thinks that all trans people should be killed. Wow. Oh my goodness. That's like, that's not what I expected to read. Um, I told him to knock it off, but he wouldn't. I snapped and punched him right in the face and broke his nose. Good. I left shortly after that, but all of my friends have ghosted me and now won't talk to me. What should I do? Cut your losses. You don't want any friends that are transphobic, racist, mean, hateful, judgmental. You do not want that. Those are not your friends. I don't condone physical violence, but I feel like in some instances it could be forgivable, especially when you're talking about a certain genre of people should be killed, especially because that's happened in history before. That's a very serious thing to say. And how are you supposed to know Um, If that person, one, it's not a funny joke, but that to me, I would take that as a death threat. And I feel like you can be physical um, when someone's threatening other people's safety 100%. And those are not your friends. You do not want them. I think that you should actually be happy that they're not calling you because you don't want to be around people like that. And if they can't understand that that was wrong of Mark to say, they can go be friends with Mark and they can go have bad karma. But that's not how you talk to people. I'm very passionate about accepting everybody for who they are and that's just so hateful. I can't believe, like, I'm shocked that that's, that's just, dis- I'm disgusted by it, honestly. We're in, also, it's 2024. I mean, obviously, there is still hateful people, but it's like, that's not respected to be a hateful person. Nobody looks on that and thinks that's a good thing, unless they're just like, oh, God, can't stand that. Okay, next one. Now that I'm heated. My friend won't leave her cheating boyfriend. My friend, 21 female, won't leave her boyfriend, 22 male, and I don't know how much more I can listen to her complain. This guy has cheated on her more than 10 times and she keeps forgiving him. They've been together since high school and she's very codependent on him. They physically fight and she always complains about how much of an asshole he is. I want her to leave him and it's getting hard to support her. What should I do? Yeah, this is like actually a very common thing. It's hard to support a friend that you know is going to make the same decisions. And it's also hard to listen to your friend because it's like 
it's going in one ear, going out the other. You can only support it so much because it brings you down when someone's always complaining. I've been in situations like this and as a friend, I try to support all the way up until it starts to affect me emotionally. As long as I'm not involved and I'm just a listener, that's one thing. But I feel like after a while, as a friend, you start to almost get involved and very passionate about it. And I've had to go to friends and say, listen, I can't hear you complain about this anymore. You know what's going on. Obviously, you're the one in that situation, but you know that it's not going to change. It's not that I don't support you leaving, but I can't support you staying and I don't want to be around it. Please keep it away from me. And that's all you got to say. And if that friend, I've had friends get upset with that, but it's too emotionally draining. You don't have that time and that energy to give out to people that has nothing to do with you. I would ask the person to stop involving you with it and they can seek help through another friend. It's that simple if they want to stay. It's hard also when someone's physically, um, because it says that this person also fights physically. That's hard because you want to be there for that person in case something gets very, very serious. But that's another thing as a friend, you could say, listen, I can't be involved with a friendship where you're physically hurting your partner or the the partner's physically hurting you. I always say to my friends, the last straw, and I won't say how I feel about the relationship, but if it is physical, you have to you have to leave. Like it's a non-negotiable. Yeah. Tell them it's not you can't hear any you can't listen to it anymore. Okay, next question. I think my ex uploaded revenge porn, but I can't prove it. I, 30 female, recently got sent a screenshot of my nudes on a porn subreddit. I also dumped this guy recently and he didn't take it well. He thinks I cheated on him, but I just didn't see a future with him. We've been no contact and I thought he was moving on. It wasn't until a guy friend sent me that screenshot. Now, I've sent that nude to a few guys in the past. My face isn't in it, but I have a tattoo on my arm and that clearly identifies me. I can't prove it was my ex, but I have a strong feeling. What should I do? Well, unfortunately, legally, if you can't prove it and you've sent it to multiple people, there is nothing you can do. Listen, this is hard to say, but my only real advice for you is to take this as a tough lesson in life and to be very cautious on who you send your nudes to. If you can't prove it, you can't take him to court over it. And it's a very disgusting thing to do. That's a very intimate thing. And you just never know what someone's going to do with it, obviously, like upload it on Reddit. I mean, that's so hateful. I guess maybe you could um, hire like a PI to get the IP address and then uh, see if that's his place that, you know, uploaded it. You could do that. I mean, that takes a lot of time, but you could hire a PI and get the location that it was uploaded and then then sue him. It's very hard to um, take legal action on on things just in general. But this to me is unfortunately just a tough, tough lesson. I wish I could give more advice, but I'm kind of curious on why the f- guy friend sent it though and how he, I mean, I guess he was like, oh man, that's my friend with that arm tattoo. But I feel like he's a little bit suspicious. I'm not going to lie. For some reason, it's in my gut. It's telling me there's just something's not up with that. Unfortunately, you could go ask him and say like, hey, did you upload this stuff? But you're not going to get an honest answer. I just get a hold of Reddit and ask them to take it down and say that you didn't give any authorization for that to be up and see if you can get it taken down, which they will. They absolutely will. All right, heartbreakers. Thanks for listening. See you guys next time.